Ta-da! Today's topic is an exciting topic. Restoration comedy. Restoration period is from 1660. Restoration comedy is English comedy that was written from 1660 to early 18th century. As you know, before the restoration period, theatres were closed and when they were reopened, there was a flood of dramatic activity. Restoration comedy is nothing but comedy of manners. Comedy of manners started from the Greek Menander. Menander's new comedy. What are the features of comedy of manners? Wit and sparkle of dialogue, upper class characters, stereotypical characters and situations, master-slave relationships. You know, Dr. Johnson, even though he was attacking it, put it correctly. Intrigue was plot, obscenity was wit. Wise always found a sympathetic friend. They pleased their age. And did not seek to mend. Intrigue was plot. Plot means backbiting, cheating, sexual trickery, sexual innuendos. This is plot. Dr. Johnson did not like it. Intrigue was plot. Obscenity was wit. They will show immorality and licentiousness on stage and say this is wit. Wise. Immorality always found a sympathetic friend. Dr. Johnson did not like it. Dr. Johnson says, They pleased their age, okay. They pleased their age, but did not seek to mend. Dr. Johnson said this in an article in the Gentleman's Magazine. Now, almost always London was the setting, metropolitan setting. Restoration comedy is aristocratic comedy, set in London. Theme is love, marriage. Mind you, always an unromantic view of marriage. People are not in pure love or anything. They are always cheating their partners. So many extramarital affairs, eavesdropping. This is the theme. It did not have any aesthetic value. But it had a great social value. These restoration comedies obviously were anti-Puritan. They came after the Puritan interregnum. And they attacked the Puritan morality. These were satirical comedies modeled on Ben Johnson's comedy of humors. Like in all comedies, restoration comedy also had Parallel plots. Many stories happening at the same time. All this indecency and immorality, luxuriousness on the stage, Puritans did not like. I'm telling you, Jeremy Collier attacked the restoration comedy in 1698. A short view of the immorality and profaneness of the English stage. This is what... Jeremy Collier wrote, listen to me guys, you can't really blame the restoration comedy writers because the restoration stage was unlike the Elizabethan stage. Elizabethan stage is free and open, huge stage where you can show wars, so many people coming together, political uh, you know, problems, easy on Elizabethan stage, but restoration stage is smaller. Indoor stage with a picture frame in front. Only inside the room scenes could be shown. That is why. Anyway, Jeremy Collier didn't like it. A short view. There is much more to say, but he's only giving a short view. Did you understand? A short view of the immorality and profaneness of the English stage. It came in 1698. Before this, William Prynne, another Puritan, had also written History of Mastics. Mastics means beating with a stick. Jeremy Collier particularly attacked Congreve and Vanbrugh. I am telling you, 
with this restoration comedy subsided a little bit congreve wrote only one play after this the way of the worlds so let us now talk about the major writers of the restoration comedy before i talk about the major writers one more thing i should tell you when jeremy collier attacked the restoration comedy and slowly restoration comedy came to an end what came after that sentimental comedy is full of tears virtuous heroines penitent villains and that also people didn't like after that came anti sentimental comedies at this time in the 18th century because of the confusions created by restoration comedy and sentimental comedy there was also the revival of shakespeare so that is the climate now this is the climate in which etheridge vaishali congreve farquhar and others wrote etheridge born in 1635 is perhaps the oldest of the restoration comedy writers etheridge's first play is the comical revenge or love in a tub followed by she would if she could and the most famous play the man of mode uh, or sir fopling flutter the man of mode or sir fopling flutter you will think it is about the man fopling flutter but no <laughs> fopling flutter is a minor character the main character is dorimant dorimant is in love with one woman mrs lovett then he sees a rich heiress harriet he wants to get rid of mrs lovett and woo harriet for which he takes the help of sir fopling flutter this is the indies and tale written by etheridge as the man of mood why shirley who was born 5 years later 1640 also contributed a lot of indecent plays to english drama vaishali's first play was love in a wood or st james's park followed by the gentleman dancing master have you heard of the spanish playwright calderon calderon have you heard spanish playwright calderon inspired our vaishali in writing the gentleman dancing master the most famous play by vaishali came after this the country wife published in 1675 the country wife 1675 is the story of harry horner he is pretending to be impotent so that he can get to meet a lot of virtuous ladies these ladies will feel comfortable because this man is impotent and he gets to make love he seduces and gets to make love to a lot of women lady fidget mrs dainty fidget mrs squeamish three women who always come to uh, come on stage together their husbands are thinking oh there is no threat from this man and then he seduces a country wife a woman from the countryside marjory pinch wife she is married to a jealous man and she happily falls in love with horner he is called horner because he puts horns on husbands he cuckles husbands you know the names everything is indecent in this play i'm telling you marjory pinch wife and horner have a love affair and at the end it is it's funny marjory pinch wife is a country wife and she is very innocent she tells everybody no horner is not impotent because she knows and all the women horner everybody are shocked oh my god everybody is shocked don't tell anyone the truth that is how the play ends it is prescribed in universities the country wife the country wife was followed by another major play that is really a great play because 
at this time vaishali was impressed you know he had married a widow that widow died and he had borrowed money from friends he was impressed for that that play that got him out of the prison the king was happy seeing this play it is the plain dealer the plain dealer is modeled on molière's misanthrope the french comedian molière Miss in misanthrope Alcest is a misanthrope. He does not trust anybody. Like that. In Vaishali is the plain dealer. Manly is the protagonist. The protagonist became so famous that Vaishali came to be called Manly Vaishali. Have you heard that? And uh, Manly does not trust anyone except his girlfriend Olivia and his best friend Vernish. you know what happens these two cheat him they get married they cheat him of his money manly loses but at the end he gains a wife there was a girl in disguise helping him he marries her at the end so these are plays by vaishali did you like my discussion you can post in the chat box if i have missed out anything if there is something more you know if you have any doubt if i am making some mistake when i speak anything at all comment in the chat box we i will reply okay now let us talk about the next playwright congreve william congreve william congreve was born much later in 1670 His first work was a novel Incognita and then came his first play The Old Bachelor The eponymous character Old Bachelor is one Hartwell and then came another famous play The Double Dealer The in the Double Dealer Melephant M E L L E F O N T Melephant is the protagonist wants to marry one Cynthia and Melephant is also the heir of Lord Touchwood meanwhile Lady Touchwood falls in love with Melephant Melephant does not encourage her you know what happens Lady Touchwood is vengeful she wants to mess up the relationship between Melephant and Cynthia this is the story of the double dealer Another play is Love for Love. A libertine Valentine and his servant Jeremy are the main characters. Congreve has written only one tragedy that is The Morning Bride. Probably you already remember from previous videos or I will talk about it in later videos. Congreve was the member of Kit Kat Club the club of illustrious wigs now you already know that congreve was attacked by jeremy collier after that congreve wrote one play which is comparatively very chaste the way of the world in the way of the world mirabel the hero wants to marry millament millament is the niece of lady wishfort Lady Wishfort has a daughter Mrs Fainall obviously the wife of Mr Fainall now there are many complications Lady Wishfort is managing the money of Mrs Fainall and Millament that is her daughter and niece and Lady Wishfort has an eye on Mirabel she will not allow Mirabel marrying Millament instead she wants millament to marry her country nephew sir wilful witwood but mirabel wants to marry millament why not because of pure love but because he wants her money now mirabel is making a plan he is getting his servant waitwell to disguise as the aristocrat sir rowland and sir rowland is wooing lady wishfort Mirabel's plan is to blackmail Lady Wishford at the end. Oh, you are going to marry a servant. I'm going to expose you. 
You better let me marry your niece. This is his plan. Wonderful plan, but the problem is our Mrs. Fainall's husband, Mr. Fainall, he is having an affair with Mrs. Marwood. This Mrs. Marwood and Fainall get to know this plan. And they expose the plan. They blackmail Lady Wishford. Your daughter, Mrs. F my wife, Mrs. Fainall, was the mistress of Mirabel once. Yeah, that is true. Mrs. Fainall, before the play, had a love affair with our Mirabel. You are confused, Hannah. No problem. It is confusing. Even for the characters, it is confusing. With whom did I have extramarital affairs? You know, they had to keep a register, I suppose. So much. <laughs> and Fainall is trying to blackmail Lady Wishford. Fainall is saying, I want to handle the money of both. Mrs. Fainall and Milliman, give me the right to handle the money. Fainall is insistent. You can't cheat Mirabel. He is cunning. You know, Mirabel has a trump card. Some secret is there that nobody knows. At the time, Mirabel was having the love affair with Mrs. Fainall. That is before the play. He had made Mrs. Fainall sign an agreement. That Mirabel is the custodian of Mrs. Fainall's money. Nobody can handle Mrs. Fainall's money. Mirabel is the custodian. If Mirabel lets her, Lady Wishford can handle that's all. Oh, Fainall is defeated. Lady Wishford is okay. She forgives the servants and, you know, agrees to the marriage between Millamend and Mirabel. You will think, Milliman will come and quietly get married to Mirabel. No way. Milliman is smart. She tells Mirabel, sign an agreement that you can have my money, okay, but I will have my freedom. At the end of the play, The Way of the World, Milliman gets Mirabel to sign an agreement. This is in the bargaining scene or Proviso scene. This is the brilliant play, The Way of the World. If, if any one of you is confused, let me tell you, take a piece of paper, write the characters, make a tree diagram, crisscross, connections, relations, then you will get it clearly. And then George Farquhar. George Farquhar has written plays like Love and the Bottle, The Constant Couple, The Recruiting Officer. The Recruiting Officer is a famous play. You should know George Farquhar himself was a recruiting officer. He recruited men to the army. In the play The Recruiting Officer, Captain Plume is recruiting men to the army by courting their sweethearts. So he will get two advantages. He will get men for the army and he will get the wives. George Faguha set most of his plays in Shrewsbury, which is a town outside of London. And then John Van Brer. John Van Brer's famous play, The Relapse, or Virtue in Danger, was a reply to Collie Sibber's Love's Last Shift or The Fool in Fashion. What is the story? You're thinking. Collie Sibber wrote Love's Last Shift. One libertine man, womanizer he is, he's having affairs with other women. He is reformed by his wife. He has one last shift or last affair and then it's over. He's reformed. Van Brer says no rake can be reformed like that. In Van Brer's The Relapse, the protagonist is reformed by his wife, but he is relapsing into his old ways. So, Collie Sibbers loves last shift or the fool in fashion. Reply is Van Brer's The Relapse or Virtue in Danger. Van Brer wrote The Provoked Wife. Collie Sibber wrote The Provoked Husband. There are many more plays. Kali Sibar was a very famous man. And he wrote 
Richard the Third, which is a reworking of Shakespeare's Richard the Third, and it became more famous than Shakespeare's play at that time. And then there are two people who wrote restoration comedies. You will be surprised to know who they are. One is Dryden. Dryden wrote Marriage a la Mode. It's a restoration comedy. Another is Alexander Pope. Along with his friends, Alexander Pope wrote a restoration comedy two hours after marriage. Or is it three? Look it up. Not very important. Now there is one more writer of restoration comedies I would tell you. Afra Ben. Afra Ben has written comedies like The Town Fop, The Rover, apart from her novels like Urunoko. So this was restoration comedy. Restoration comedy came to an end at the beginning of the 18th century because of Puritan attacks and for other reasons giving way to revival of Shakespeare's plays, sentimental comedies and anti-sentimental comedies of Dryden, mm -hmm, Sheridan and Goldsmith. I hope you liked this video. Please read extra remember. Your own reading is what will help you remember. And I am posting questions in reels. Follow them. Follow 10 p.m. classes also because you will get a lot of questions there. Together, this is the feast of English literature. Until the next video, bye-bye.